Today, I'm going to talk about a priori algorithm with an example, and also I'm going to talk about how to generate candidates with join step and prune step because some people find it a little bit tricky. Okay, so let's get started. This is a typical question for a priori algorithm. We're given a data set, minimum support, and minimum confidence. So we want to mine association rules from this question. So what is association rules? It is something like this. So it means if I buy product A, I will probably buy product B as well. So you know, retailers, they want to know rules like this because they can make recommendations or they can, you know, uh, put product B closer to product A to encourage sales, something like that. Okay, so we are going to mine association rules by two steps. The first step is to find all frequent item sets. So the item sets could be something like this. So it means customers often buy product A and product B together in a transaction. And then we can generate rules from this item set. We can generate rules like if A, then B, or if B, then A. So this is the second step. We generate rules from the frequent item sets that we have found from the first step. Okay, so now let's get into the details of this question. So the first step is to find all frequent item sets. And we start from item sets containing only one element. Okay, so in this question, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven products. So here it is. These are the item sets for level one. Let's call it C1. Okay, so now we need to get the occurrences of these item sets. So for example, for this item set one, it occurs one, two, three, three times. And for this item set, it occurs one, two, three, four, four times, so on and so forth. So we can get the occurrences for these item sets. And then we need to compare their occurrences with the minimum support. So the minimum support of this question is 0 0.3. And that means the minimum support count is 0 0.3 times 5, because we have five transactions here. So it is 1.5. It means an item set has to occur at least 1.5 times, or let's say two times, to be frequent. Okay, so these are the candidates, and they have to pass this test to, you know, be at least minimum support count. So we can get rid of those who do not satisfy it. So this one, this one, and this one. And after this, we get L1. That means the frequent item sets for level 1. Okay? So now we can level up to level 2. So firstly, we need to generate candidates from the previous level. Okay? So uh, we generate candidates like this. We combine every two of them. Like 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 5. 2, 4, 2, 5, and 4, 5, right? So here it is. These are the candidates for level 2. And then we need to get the occurrences of these item sets. For this one, 1, 2, it occurs 1 time, 2 times, okay? And 1, 4, it occurs 1 and 2 times. 1, 5, it occurs 1 time, okay? So, so on and so forth, so we can get the occurrences of these item sets. And then we need to compare them with the minimum support count, which is 1.5, right? So we get rid of those who do not satisfy it. Then we get AL2. So this means the frequent item sets for level 2. So here it is. And then we can level up to level 3. So firstly, we need to generate candidates from previous level, right? From these item sets. So how do we do that? You know, uh, for this level, 
We know how to do that. Just combine every two of them. But what? How to do that for level two to level three? Okay, what we do is called join step. We join these two item sets because their first element is the same, and then we combine them as one, two, four. Okay. Also, we join these two item sets because their first element is the same, and then we get two, four, five. Right. We do not combine these two item sets because their first element is different. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I combine these two and these two because their first element is the same, and this step is called the join step. Actually, we also need to apply the prune step, but you know this is an easy question, and let's just skip it for now. I'm gonna talk about it with more complex examples at the end of this video. Okay, so now let's just focus on it and solve this question first. So after we get candidates for level three, we need to count their occurrences, just like what we did before, right? So for this item set one, two, four, it occurs only one time, and for this item set two, four, five, it occurs zero times. Okay, so apparently none of them satisfy the minimum support count, so we get rid of both of them, right? So in this case, we get nothing for level three, and we stop here. Okay, so for now, we found all the frequent item sets, and they are these item sets from level one and level two. Okay. So now let's get into the second step, which is to generate rules from the frequent item sets that we have just found. So here it is.、Um, and we generate rules from starting from level two because you know level one they only have one element in it and they cannot generate any rules, right? So we start from level two. And、uh, for for example, for this item set, we can generate rules like. If one then two, or if two then one, right? So on and so forth. We can、uh, generate these eight rules from these four frequent item sets, and then what we need to do is we need to calculate the confidence of each rule, okay? And then compare it with the minimum confidence, which is zero point six for this question. All right. So now let's calculate the confidence of each rule. For example, for this rule. The confidence is defined as this frequency of one two over frequency of one. That is, one and two occurs two times, and one occurs three times. So it is two over three, and for this one, the confidence will be the frequency of one four over the frequency. Of one, which is one and four occurs two times, and one occurs three times, so it is two over three. And similarly for this one, it is the frequency of two four, which is two times, over the frequency of two, which is four times. Right. So we can calculate all the confidence for these rules and compare it with the minimum confidence zero point six. So you know this one, yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, yes. Okay. So after it, we just get rid of those who do not satisfy it, and here it is. So we get the these five, five rules, right? So here it is. This is the answer to this question, and also we write the support. And the confidence with the rule together as the answer. Okay, so this is the answer for this question. So you may have the question that how do we exactly generate rules from these frequent item sets? Because you may notice that we only generate rules from level two, right? For this question. So you know. If there are two elements in an addison, I know how to generate rules, right? But what if 
there are more elements in the item set, for example, like this. All right. What we do is we follow this algorithm. So the S means subsets. So firstly, we write down the subsets of this item set. So it is one, two, three, one, two, and so two, three, one, three, right? And the right part of the rule is the complement of the subset. So it is one, two, three, two, one, three. For this one, it is one, two. For this one, it is three. For this one, it is one. And for this one, it is two. Okay, so this is how we generate rules from this item set and here we get one, two, three, four, five, six, six rules generate, generated from this item set, right? And then we can calculate the confidence of this rule and, you know, do the following steps. Okay. So now let's talk about how to generate candidates using join step and prune step. So I guess we already have some idea of join step because I did it here, right? So let me give you a more general explanation. So let's say we want to generate candidates from LK to CK plus one. So you know the item sets in LK containing K elements in it, right? And the item sets in CK plus one containing K plus one elements in it, right? And the join step is like this. We join two item sets if they are first K minus one elements are same. And we join them as, you know, the first k minus one come from here, and then, and this one comes from here. So you know, in this case, this is k minus one elements plus two elements, so it is k plus one elements for c k plus one, right? So this is exactly what we did here. So you see, we want to generate uh, candidates from L2 to C3, right? So we got to make sure the first K minus one element should be the same, which is the first one element here, right? Should be the same. So the first one element is the same. And then plus this one, plus this one, we get one, two, four, right? Also, this one is the same. The first k minus one element is the same, and plus this one, and plus this one, we get one, two, four, five, right? So this is how join step works. And now we need to apply the prune step. So the prune step is like this. Let's say for this item set, we got to make sure the subsets of it containing k elements should all be in LK. So for this one, the subsets 1, 2 should be in LK, yes. 1, 4 should be in LK. And 2, 4 should be in LK. And all of them are in LK. So yes, we keep it. And for this item set, the subsets 2, 4 should be in LK. 2, 5 should be in LK. And 4, 5 should be in LK, but it's not in LK. So in this case, we prune this subset oh uh, sorry item set okay so actually this item set will be pruned by the prune step so it works like this the item sets for a ck plus one now we get this item set from the join step right it contains k plus one elements in it and we have to make sure the subsets of it containing k elements should all be in LK. If any one of them is not in LK, we would prune this item set. Okay, so now let's see a more complicated example. So here it is. We want to generate candidates from L4 to C5. So firstly, 
we need to apply the join step, right? And we got to make sure the first k, mi k minus 1 element should be the same, which is the first three elements should be the same, right? So here, yes, these two, we combine them as 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, yes. And the first three, first three, okay, so these two, we also combine them as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and yes, so that's it. These are the two item sets that we get from the join step, right? And then we need to apply the prune step, which is to check the subsets of it containing four elements should be all be in the LK, right? So how many subsets should we check? It is four out of five, right? So it is five subsets and they are one, two, three, five, one, two, three, six, one, two, five, six, and one, three, five, six, two, three, five, six. So here it is, these five subsets, right? And we gotta make sure one, two, three, five, yes, it's in L4. One, two, three, six, yes. One, two, five, six, yes. One, three, five, six, yes. Two, three, five, six, yes, here it is. So all of them are in L4, and in this case, we keep it, right? Also, for this item set, we got to check the subsets. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, six. Two, three, five, six. And three, four, five, six. Okay, so two, three, four, five. Yes. Two, three, four, six. Yes. Two, three, five, six. Yes. Two, four, five, six. No, it's not in LK, right? So in this case, we prune this item set. So after the join step and the prune step, we only have one item set for C5. So this is how we generate candidates using the join step and the prune step. Okay, so now I think we can review what we have done to solve this question, All right? So this is the question, right? And we want to mine association rules by two steps. The first step, find all frequent item sets and the second step, generate rules from it, okay? So you see the first step is actually level by level and iterative, right? So I would say the pattern is like this. From LK, we get CK plus one, and then we get LK plus one. So from LK to CK plus one, what we did, we did, firstly, we need to generate candidates, right? By the join step and the print step, right? And also, we need to get the occurrences of these item sets, right? And in this case, we come from LK to CK plus 1. And then these candidates need to pass the test that they are at least the minimum support, right? So you see, we can compare them with the minimum support count, right? And in this case, we get LK plus one, right? So this is the first step. And then the second step is to generate rules from these items that we have just found, right? So firstly, we follow this algorithm to generate rules like this. And then we calculate the confidence of each rule, right? And then we compare them with the minimum confidence and get rid of those who do not satisfy it. And we get the answer, right? And we just write the support and the confidence of this rule together with it. And here it is. This is the answer to the algorithm example. 